Hello everybody and welcome to the Sovereign Village Project. I do believe that we have crossed the Rubicon of public awareness when it comes to this food crisis. Um, Gabby was at the gym and accidentally watched some network television. Of course, we don't really consume mainstream television except to know what the current propaganda line is. Um, and that's always very useful. And so she was paying a little bit of attention as she was running on the treadmill there and watching mainstream as they began talking about food crisis. Of course, they blame it completely on price gouging which is funny, why wouldn't they price gouging all of the decades before that, just now? But price gouging and of course um, the current common cold that's going around. And regardless of what they deem to be the cause or how they're spinning this, the fact is the food crisis is entering public awareness now and that's a very different time than we're used to. Just like what happened a couple of years ago, those of us who are preparedness minded or who just simply make a habit of garnering as much information as possible, we were very aware of what was happening in China many months before the public was. Uh, I know I was sitting there saying like, why are the borders open? Why, why are people flying in from China? You know, because back then I thought it was, I was very concerned it was a real virus. Um, and I, was, I thought the viruses were bad things back then. But anyway, when it crossed into public awareness, it was like they turned on the tap, the spigot. It's like they just turned on the button that says, okay, now start blasting this all over the mainstream. And that's what I see happening now with the, with the food crisis is there they're starting the fear programming and they're bringing it into the narrative officially and so to us those of us who are prepared hopefully we are already ahead of this you know I was out doing a prepping run today uh, we're about 30 minutes away from big box stores so I try to do all my shopping all at once but as you can see my prepping is mostly things like solar panels and that's the beauty of being a prepper is that you don't have to engage in the panic buying or at least you get to stay ahead of the panic buying you know the, while folks are panic buying peanut butter and bread I'm panic buying solar panels when they start panic buying solar panels I'll be panic buying uh, I don't know more farm tools um, so it's important to remember that the point of prepping is not to join the mob at the stores it's to number one to be more prepared by having all of the goods you need far ahead and far ahead of everybody but also you're you're being a good person you're 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 stocking up while the supply chains are intact and before the rush starts and you're not contributing to the problem that's about to happen um, so this is kind of a last call I think I could be wrong but I think for for many people in many regions of course it's not gonna be the same across the country or across the globe but for many people in many regions particularly big cities I think empty shelves and rationing are going to become commonplace and a part of life now um, as will skyrocketing prices. So prepping food could also be seen as simply a good investment. You can trade your fiat in and get a lot more food than you will be able to in a few months. And even with the high price of food right now, it's important to really really remember the context that, that we live in when it comes to food, which is that you're still getting a crazy good deal on food. Even now with the price, yeah, with the price skyrocketing, you are still paying far less than you should for that food because our food is subsidized by the federal government. You know, they subsidize big ag and chemical agriculture to put the small guys out of business and the family farms out of business so they can uh, swoop in with their fed cronies and take over all that land. And so the, they subsidize it and that brings the price absurdly low. And it's also subsidized by mechanized agriculture and destructive monocultures. You know, we're kind of borrowing from the next generation. We're borrowing topsoil from the next generation, screwing them over to feed ourselves at a cheap price. So. While there's not much we can do to stop that other than you know changing our own habits, right now price food is still much cheaper than, than it would be in reality in, in a system where the farmer was actually paid for their labor and the energy inputs were actually adequately covered by, by the equivalent amount of currency. So still a great deal to be buying food and there's still a lot of deals to be had out there. I just got a big 20 pound bag of non-GMO rice um, in the Asian food section. Um, I'm really stocking up more on luxuries and you know canning supplies, pickling spices, things like that. Um, so that's another thing is it's maybe wiser to look towards canning supplies and those kinds of things because for me I'd rather much rather have the ability to grow food indefinitely and preserve food indefinitely more than I would like to just have food stocked aside. I really only need enough food in my root cellar to get me through to the next growing season. And ideally I won't even touch that. I'll, I would just like to keep my food preps untouched, let them rot, never touch them. I'm not even rotating much at this point because we're, we're growing our own food. We don't want to buy food. We don't want to be putting uh, food with unknown origins into our bodies anymore, especially not at this point because that's another thing you're going to see with food collapses. Manufacturers are just going to start switching to cheaper and cheaper options you know there's going to be more soy filler more garbage filler and, and stuff um, so get the good food while you can um, i've actually been noticing organic sections getting cleaned out faster than some of the regular sections of food in these stores so just a word to everybody out there it's uh just keep prepping and uh, think of think not just of prepping food but of also prepping the things you need to make food hand tools fuel uh, for whatever machinery you rely on um, our farm only relies on 
a lawnmower and a chainsaw as far as fossil, fossil fuel machinery. Um, car parts are another one to stock up on right now too, you know. If you can get to the U-Pool and get any uh, car parts you need, that would probably be wise. Um, I know lots of folks inside that industry who say a lot of trouble's coming down the pike there. But uh, stock up everybody, don't panic, no fear. God is in control and there is a plan. Even the bad stuff is for a reason. So um, let's all rebuild our food networks into something more resilient, more free, and more regenerative. In the meantime, y'all stay safe, be well, and happy homesteading.